Ah, childhood. A time ranging usually from birth to around the age of 15 or 16 when one starts thinking they're an adult. Even though usually they are not considered adults until 18 to 40. <laughs> Get it? Because, you know, adults are weird. So, you know, I was thinking back and forth. Should I tell you guys some interesting stories from my childhood? Ones I've never told anyone. Not even my best friend. Not just joking, I've told her a few of these. And some that are just plain weird. I was a weird kid. I was that kid that people ignored and bullied and assaulted because I did weird things, you know, I acted weird. I didn't exactly have the same mannerisms as them because I had different family stuff, you know. Let's see. Ooh, how about I tell you the glowing slug story? I was about seven or eight. I was in my house on the military base and I could could use the bathroom. And something feels strange. I don't know what it is. So I go in the bathroom, you know, and I'm doing my business, and I look down, and on the floor, there's a slug. Now that was not unusual, as our slug house had a lot of slugs that just randomly came in through the door. But they were usually black or like a yellowish black? I don't know. But this one was glowing. Just glowing. So younger me didn't know what to do. So I finished up, washed my hands, and then I was like, okay, well, I'll just do this to prove that this isn't a dream. It's not all in my head. So I take a cup, the one you should drink out of, and I put it over the slug, you know, making sure it can't get out. And I go back to bed, and I wake up in the morning, and I tell mom, I'm like, mom, mom, I saw a golden slug. And she was like, what? No, you're probably dreaming. I was like, I put a cup on it. So we go in the bathroom, and the cup is there. There is a cup there. <laughs> um, the cup's there, but we open it and there's nothing there. I think I sleepwalk every now and then. Uh, well, I used to. I slept walk, put my glasses on, and I'm going back to sleep. I don't know. What other story? Give me a minute. I have thought of these before I did this. I don't just go into these YouTube videos. I expect you guys to listen to me. You know, maybe not just my childhood stories. There's some from middle school that would surprise you. Oh, I'll tell you a real lit one from middle school here. So, we're all in our classes, right? Or, I think we're about to go to lunch. Somebody set a trash can on fire. In the bathroom. Now, nobody was happy about this because the fire alarm started glowing. We were in fourth, I was in fourth period, you know, just doing math. Two plus two equals 69. <laughs> and we were doing math and it just starts going off. And the teacher's like, come on. And I grabbed my, I had something with me at the time, put it in my pocket. It was snowing outside. I had on flats. I did not expect to have to go through piles of snow. Wait, no, I didn't have my flats. I had my, um, you know, those sneakers with the low bottoms. Uh, this was around the time we saw another teacher helping another down this pile of snow. We shipped them. So, anyway, like I was saying, that we had to trot down the hill and wait, you know, kind of like a fire drill, in the snow. I think I had a jacket with me. But I was standing. And I felt high. So it was like one-fifth of my goddamn body. Just in the snow. It's cold, and just because some douchey kid, who I never even trust by the look of him, he just look had this, you know, off thing about him. Not that he looked, you know, mentally unstable or anything, he just seemed not the kind of person I don't want to be friends with. God, that sounds like a douche move. You know, like, some people you do want to be friends with, some you don't, you just, he gave me an off vibe. So he set the guy in trash can on fire, and I haven't seen him since, even though he's still on Facebook. Um... I'm not giving out any names, by the way, because I'm pretty sure I can get sued. <laughs> so, here's something I did. So I had, you know, I have choir. And I got a balloon because we were having a party because we did good at the concert. Well, we did a concert, so we got 
party, which is food. Somebody bought streamers and balloons, so I got a balloon, and I blew it up during lunch. I was pressing against it, not meaning to pop or anything. In the middle of the cafeteria, the balloon pops, and everybody turns to look at me. And I'm just here like, oh my god, what the frick did I just do? And my friend hides her face in her arms, and uh, I just take the remains of it and push it into my other friend's lunchbox, because he said I could, I mean lunch bag, you know, the paper kind that he threw away, and he got his balloon taken away, and I feel bad for that, but uh, this was in seventh grade? Uh, the time I made a gay joke in math class, so we were doing this thing and the teacher said to make a straight line and I turned to Emily and I thought I was doing this quietly and I say, do you mean not me? So it turns out I had said this out loud and everybody heard me and the teacher and I just burst out laughing and people were laughing and the teacher was like, when I stopped, she was like, are you done? And I'm just like, yeah, I'm done. Just totally done with everything. Done with this year. Done with the amount of gay jokes I make because for some reason I cannot stop myself. Done with the stares of my classmates because apparently it offends them that I am a homosexual. Um, surprisingly, nobody at school ever called me a faggot or a dyke anything or anything. That only happened for my brothers, you know, call me a faggot, dyke, queer. I've called myself gay lord, but that's more of a I am the gay lord, ha ha ha. Um, can I say dyke on the internet? Faggot, stuff like that? I don't, I don't mean that. I can't censor that. Um. Heck. Childhood stories. Oh, I've already talked about ghosts on the channel before. And I've talked about aliens. I don't think there was a direct moment when I stopped being childish, I mean, still I'm kind of a child, that's how people see me, but there was a moment, we uh, we had to move these apartments, so my little sister got to keep all of her toys, I was about nine, yes I know, this is childish, and I've never really talked about it out loud, but it's kind of the moment I matured, so, you know, it's kind of an interesting experience, so, mine got thrown away, every single one, except for the stuffed animals I had with me, like I have one I've had since I was six that I keep for the memories, They were thrown away. Now it's not my dad's fault, he thought I didn't want them. It's no one else's fault really, it's just circumstances. And then my mom started me use her tablet, so I watch YouTube and stuff, and then I... My brother told me about somebody called Jeff the Killer. Now I've always been fascinated with horror ever since I was a little girl. And the whole Bloody Mary thing happened. I'll tell you about that when I'm done with this story. So talk about Jeff the Killer, and I went on the website and I looked it up and I found his story. And I was like... Murder? I love me some murder, so I started reading these stories. This is kind of what I used to like One Direction when I was like eight, nine. And this is what got me out of that boy band phase. I used to ship One Direction though because I was like, oh my god, Harry and Lewis are so gay for each other. Even though my mom thought I liked them, but no, I did not like them. And then, oh my god, I want to kill them. Anyway, you know, I got I like them in a way like, okay, their music is all right. But Harry and Lewis are totally gay for each other. Now Lewis is a dad, Harry let it the Ben fell apart. But I don't really care. So I've been reading past and like, Jeff the Killer? Eyeless Jack. Slenderman. Murder. I read the fanfiction. The Times readers just made me feel weird, mostly with the main characters. And then when I got here, you know, I got into FNAF, which was more horror. There's this one moment. I didn't tell anybody about it. It was the summer, you know, my friend was in California. Not, was it California? I don't know. My friend was in another state. So, yeah, she was the only one that I talked to. And I was reading this book. This was before I publicly came out as bi, when I thought I was. And I was writing a book. It was creepypasta themed, of course. And I was shipping myself with this male character because I thought that was what I was supposed to do. And then I made a female character. Now this was after a scene when I was reading the FNAF fanfiction. And it was a Mangle Times female reader. 
I didn't tell anyone about it. I deleted that after I read it, even though I don't like the male readers times female readers made me feel something. When, you know, she compliments the character, I blushed and I I was like, oh my god, is this is this is wrong. Something's wrong here. You know? So I wrote this character, she was a bird girl, and uh my character fell in love with her and then there was this moment when I was online and I read something homophobic and I was like, Oh my god, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, I need to get rid of it. So I took it the book. And I wrote those pieces out and later on I got mad the entire thing ripped it half and they're in the trash can because I was like and I came out and it's fine. But um I got a creep pasta and I think that's when I started to mature because I read all of these murderous things. Now the Bloody Mary thing, I'm gonna tell you about that and I'm going to end this video. I was in first grade. Now this was what got me into horror, which got me into the murder and the death and the blood. I'm not a murderer. I don't want to kill people. I just find the topic fascinating. So this girl told me about Bloody Mary and I laughed at her. I laughed right in her face. She told me not to laugh. She told me that Bloody Mary would get me in my sleep. So I didn't believe her. I laughed at her and I went home and I went to bed. Later that night, I had a dream. I was being, and I was in a very cold room, you know. Ooh. I was being followed by this girl. I think she was pale and she had this hair, it was all black and ratty. She had a knife in her hand and a balloon in the other one. And she was following me and she was staring. There was a scene in the background and I go, ah, you know, ah, ah. Chick. I don't really know what that meant. It's terrified me. And I looked it up and I was like, that's Bloody Mary. I don't know if it was some coincidence, but she looked exactly like my dream shoulder. And that's when I got into goosebumps, which I know is dumb, but come on. And it was amazing. I'm sure I was scared sometimes and creep positive used to terrify me. Go to bed being like, am I going to be killed by Jeffrey the killer? Is Slenderman going to impale me with his testicles? With his tentacles? Tentacles. Was he going to impale me with his tentacles and kill me? I said tentacles. I did not say anything else, but it... But since I was, you know, messing with my throat, it might have sounded inappropriate. But, uh, this is some stuff about me, some stuff I have told people, some stuff I haven't, like, it's like one. And anyway, that is all, and these are some stories, some, no, not really spooky, just some more stuff about me. Because I thought, well, the best way to start a YouTube channel is to, you know, get people interested in me as a person. I have more stories, and I think I will tell you some more in a few days, because I've got the rest of the summer. And anyway, I will see you beauties later. Goodbye.